Hello, welcome to Wally Bra, and today I'm just going to do a little unboxing for you of a new toy that I just um, had delivered by Amazon. It's an air quality meter. Yes, yeah, right about an air quality meter. Oh my god, just gone out. There you go, like magic. So this little air quality meter I got off Amazon. It cost me about 60, 70 euros. Um, so it's relatively cheap. And there are more expensive ones online, but the main reason I bought this one because it does CO2 as well, and I thought it'd be quite useful for the RV, you know, camping car or motorhome, whatever you like to call it in your country. But let's have a look at it and to see um, what it's like. I have had it out of the box briefly, just to make sure it was in there, but I haven't actually played with it yet. And I'm going to do a series of tests with this in some later videos. In this case, this is purely just an unboxing, just so I give you an idea of what you'd get if you actually bought one of these. So let's bring this camera down here and we'll do the older, you know, like model, models hands, aren't they? What do you reckon? So there we go, we've got a little device here. It does have the Roche and what have you on there, which is quite good. It is made in China, I'm very sorry. I know how some people feel about that, but there's not a lot you can do about some of this stuff. It's quite hard to try and find anything and also afford anything that isn't made in China. So this is my little uh, meter. And on the face of it, it feels quite nice quality, actually. It's quite solid. It's not a flimsy case. Um, yeah, that's quite a rigid little device. And on the back here, it says Air Quality Detector Model JSM, so that's JSM, 131. And it uses 5 volts. So it does charge via USB, and that's why it's 5 volts, I imagine. So you've got a USB charger on the side here to charge it up. And this particular one is quite good. What have got here? We've got manual. And also we've got a charging lead. This is Norman USB charging lead. Charging lead sorry. And um, this one detects, so it says here, HCHO. Now that's the one you'd use for formaldehyde. So for instance, I use powdered resin wood glues, such as this cascomite which I've stained brown as well. And um, it it's a formaldehyde, a euroformaldehyde. So it's quite tenuous, potentially a cancer-causing um, dust if you sand that. So that's one of the reasons why I was worried about this. But also, I'm suffering a little bit of breathing problems um, of late. And I put it down to my really bad habits in my workshop, hence breathing in too much dust. Not very clever. So it also does CO2, like I said, which is good for doing gas, what have you, um, for you know things that burn gas, carbon dioxide. And then we have TVOC. I'm not certain what TVOC actually is, but we have got PM2.5 um, and PM10, and that is to do particle sizes. So we've got two particle sizes. Not sure what the TVOC is. And I've got a wasp in here. He's hovering around me. Go away, wasp. Don't like wasps. They sting you. So let's have a look. I'm not quite certain how you use it. I haven't really looked yet, if I'm absolutely honest. And here we have an on switch. So obviously that will be on. Uh, looks like you've got to hold it down. There you go. Hold it down. And as you can see on here, um, oh, actually originally it flashed up in Chinese and now it's gone to English. So obviously it's in the calibration of the machine. And we have the formaldehyde. And you see that the, all the... It's now sucking the air in, running it over the sensors, and as you can see, the actual scales here are changing as we go along. I'm not quite certain what these actual figures mean yet, but I will find out, and I'll add them into the later videos, because I'm going to do some tests with this in different situations. For instance, sanding, and also sanding with um, urea formaldehyde, you know, powder resin wood glues or cascomite type glues and seeing if the um, urea formaldehyde one increases much. Now at the moment it's saying uh, there's about 52 milligrams per meter cubed. That sounds like quite a lot to me. It's a bit worrying that is. Um, but also here this is the particle size PM uh, of 2.5 and PM 10 uh, 13 and 21 uh, retrospectively. So does it mean there's more large particles and there's smaller particles? I'm not quite certain. I need to find out about that. Um, the CO2 isn't registering because there is none, pretty much. What if I blow over it? Maybe that'll change it. I'm kind of blowing over now, really. And mean value. So that's HCHO. 
mean value. I'm not quite certain what that means either. I will find out and I'll let you know. At the moment it's saying uh, good and good. PO1, PO2, not quite certain what they are. That's all to do with the environment. Ah, oh, I see. But anyway, as you say, this is the little meter. It's quite substantial. It's got plenty of information. And I would hope we'd be able to... Um, oh, get a bit more interest with it. Get more interesting readings as time goes on with three little tests. Anyway, hope you found that of interest. And if you do um, want to buy one of these for whatever reason, um, I will put a link below and i'll put a link to the other one as well that i was looking at and um yeah if you're most kind while you're here if you click like and subscribe and maybe a little bell icon and then you'll get notifications when i upload more videos regarding my tests using or well, testing my environment in my woodworking workshop and seeing what changes um there are regarding these meat reads and i'm gonna try and find a mean average as in um what is considered normal for these uh, particular um, tests. Anyway, thank you for watching, and yeah, check back soon. <laughs>